One day, Sally started crying to come out. So I unzipped the bubble, see what she would do. She just walked out, but then quickly realized she couldn't breathe and kind of fell over. So I had to put her back into the bubble. But that didn't stop her from wanting to continue to try. I got a call from my friend a little while ago about a little puppy that needed help. She really struggled in the car on the way here. She was gasping for air. We just got her into the oxygen bubble and she still is struggling to breathe. And we're gonna give her a little time to just let her lungs decompress and hopefully we can get her breathing normally on oxygen in a couple days. It's been a couple days since Sally has been in the oxygen bubble. She's actually wanting to come out of the oxygen bubble, but every single time I try and take her out, she starts gasping for air and I have to put her back into the bubble. So I think at this point, we're gonna have to keep her in full time. She's got really bad pneumonia. She probably aspirated while nursing on mom. She was completely oxygen dependent. The doctors told us that we did not have a good prognosis at the beginning, but we really wanted it to be a different outcome. She was having trouble breathing, but she's a fighter. You're a bad girl. She was wagging her tail. She was licking the window of the oxygen chamber. So she was just our little bubble girl. We were fighting for her. We had to make sure her bubble was very comfortable for her. We couldn't even go in there and like love on her because all the oxygen would come out. She could see out and you could tell she would always be watching. As she grew, she would get these little spurts of energy. She didn't want to be in there. She wanted to come out and like explore. We would try every day. We'd take her out of the bubble, let her walk around the floor. Within like a minute, she would be gas for, for air. So we would put her back into the bubble. Was it good? Oh, wow, it's so comfy. And we'd zip her back up and you know let her calm down and then she'd be fine again. We would do that every day. Take her out, put her back in, take her out, put her back in. She was just looking around like, oh wow, there's like something outside of my bubble. Our little bubble girl is making some amazing progress. I just had her out of the bubble for a whole minute before she started getting worked up, but this is giving me a lot of hope that we can keep her out of the bubble longer and longer. Over weeks, we extended that period of her being out of oxygen. Hi, you. By just like 30 seconds to a minute. Sometimes we would even have a stopwatch. Like at that moment, she would need to go back in. Today, we are building Sally a new enclosure. So I'm not really sure what we're gonna use or how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna do it for her. We built out of our plexiglass kennel. We had painter's tape and we made it to where it would still have adequate oxygen flow and it was big enough for her to like run around in. She could ex now exercise her lungs in oxygen without just sitting in one little chamber. And it was big enough for us to climb in to the chamber with her. And that was like a turning point for her. We would open the door up and let her run around on the floor. And she got to a point where she knew she had to run back to her bubble to get her oxygen. Once we got to the point where she was out for like five minutes, we started trying to take her outside in the grass because she had only ever touched inside. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is a whole new world again. We just had Sally outside for the first time and she absolutely loved it, but then almost immediately got too excited and she started breathing really heavy again. I had to put her back into her bubble. But she seemed to like the grass. So we actually bought her some artificial turf for her big bubble. She seemed to be more comfortable with what the feeling of grass was. So when we would put her outside next, she would start running through the grass. 
and then she would stop. She was very smart. She knew where to run back. She would run back to the bubble and then she'd paw to come back out when she was ready. She just had a routine now. And eventually one day she just didn't want to go back in the bubble. Today is a good day. Sally has been out of the bubble for an hour and a half. And every single time I'm trying to put her back into the bubble, she runs back out to continue to play and she will not stay. So I am watching her really closely, but she's out running around playing. She was playing and she was playing and I was just waiting for her to run back to the bubble and she never did. I was like, okay, she's still out of the bubble. I don't know what's going on and she's not struggling. I continued to put her back in a couple times, did not want to go back in. So I was like, okay. So I let her stay out. She was like, I don't need this anymore. Now she's no longer in the bubble. Her energy level was like zero to a hundred. We kept her for weeks after just to make sure she was still comfortable off of oxygen. Well, our little Sally girl is off to a new home. One of my coworkers is adopting her. Her name's Bonnie and she is just going to thrive every day. actually pick out what fits them. Oh, looks like she's already found a little I actually work with Bonnie, so I get to see her every single day, and I cannot be more excited. We are driving to Sally's first birthday party. We're celebrating one year of life for our little bubble girl. Thank <laughs> you.